G'day Froggers, welcome back to the bench and today we're going to be looking at what difference the drill bit shape makes. So I've got four different bits here, they're all Makita's, 12mm diameter and aside from this one they're all 210mm long, this one's 215 for some reason. We got a standard, we got a V+, plus, we got a center plus and we got a Nemesis 4 cutter. So let's take a closer look at them and in terms of price the standard is pretty damn cheap. Uh, I got this in a 15 pack and it ended up being 327 per unit. The V Plus was about three times as much, it was about 950 per unit, single pack. Center Plus was about double the price of the standard at 650, single price. And the Nemesis 4 cutter, that was 15 bucks, so about five times the cost. So under the microscope, let's take a closer look. So the standard drill bit is basically a straight edged wedge uh, for a chisel. The V plus, same kind of shape, but it's got a little bit of texturing on there. There are three little bumps, uh, which supposedly break up the concrete a little bit better. So the center plus is pretty much a flat blade, but with a little point in the middle. That's meant to keep it centered while it's drilling and presumably, you know, drill more efficiently. The Nemesis is a four cutter. It's got a full carbide tip. Profile is pretty similar to the Center Plus. It's got a flat kind of profile uh, with a little point in the middle and little chamfers on the corners there to stop it uh, from binding into rebar and breaking. So the first test is gonna be a speed test. So I've got some 55 MPA concrete out the back and I've just got all these guys drilled in 100 mil. And for this test, I use the old Bosch Bulldog. So this is a corded version, so I don't need to worry about batteries running down or anything like that. So averaging up a few of those runs, the standard drill bit number one ended up with uh, an average of 17.17 .17 seconds. The V plus ended up with an average of 14.76 seconds. Drill bit number three, the center plus ended up with 12.63 seconds, even faster. And a little bit slower, 15.36 uh, seconds was the Nemesis. So that, that's kind of interesting, but not, not super surprising if you consider that the, the Nemesis just has a lot more surface area, you know? That's essentially a blunter cutting, uh, cutting edge than this guy. Um, so each blow is going to be spread out over a bigger surface area. And uh, yeah, slightly slower, but still very efficient. So during all this drilling, uh, I noticed drill bits one and two had a fair bit of vibration going on, a bit of shudder, uh, and it didn't really seem to go away but drill bit three, the center plus, that started off with a bit of a shutter, a bit of a vibration. Uh, and then once it got down into the material a bit, that kind of smoothed out. One thing I really noticed using these was the four cutter. Oh man, this thing noticeably smoother pretty much the whole way through than the other three. This felt really nice to use. But this got me thinking, you know, what's an easy way to quantify the amount of vibration? So anyway, I got this phone, uh, downloaded this app from Bosch, which is uh, INVH. Cool little vibration meter app here. And see the little trace there. And I strapped this to the drill. So don't worry about this. This thing is a Nokia. Uh, and as you can see, it's a little bit damaged already because I dropped this off a cliff a while ago. And, uh, you know, it still works pretty well. So let's take a look at all the traces together. 
So you'll notice they're all kind of jumping around all over the place. This is vibration data after all. Um, the blue line is the up and down axis and the red and green are the horizontal axes. So like side to side for the phone and front to back for the phone. Um, you'll notice that they are kind of jumping around all over the place, but in general, the blue one here is lower than the rest. These guys tend to be around 25 and 30 and the blue tends to be around 20. Uh, the other two do jump around a fair bit more, but in general, these guys are sort of between maybe eight and 12, whereas the bit four tends to be, you know, maybe between sort of six and 10 in general. Good spot to pause it. So yeah, that's, that's illustrating it pretty well there. All right, so that's that's fairly clear that the uh, the four cutter is vibrating a fair bit less than the others. So of course my little camera here can actually do a thousand frames a second slow mo. Part of the reason I got it, Sony ZV-1, uh, and uh, yep, it's pretty bloody handy because this actually is going to allow us to see maybe why these things are actually vibrating so much. So let's take a look at bit one. You'll notice from the very first blow. This thing is jumping around sideways. There's a fair bit of deflection going on and uh, even once it gets down into the material a little bit, it's sort of jumping side to side a little bit. Also big chunks flying off here. Drill bit two, once again, we have that kind of side to side deflection from the actual chisel tip there. Beautiful crutch in the background there. Look at that. Magnificent. Drill bit three, the centering point. Is that going to help? Cool. So from the very first blow, that little tip is fully in the material. And uh, oh, it's blowing big chunks off, but it is actually still deflecting a bit. And yeah, I did notice this when I was drilling. That shuttering kind of stopped when it was, you know, a few centimeters into the hole. So the, the centering did seem to actually start working. And the Nemesis, we've got, there's a little bit of deflection, a little bit of bouncing sideways just to start off. But once that tip is embedded into the material, it really just starts, you know, drilling nice and straight, really going to town on that stuff. Oh, look at that. That flute spiraling there is pretty mesmerizing too. Very cool. So there you go. Bits one and two tend to bounce sideways with the impact of the drill. Centering point did, did start digging in and start drilling nice and smooth after a while. But the Nemesis, she started drilling pretty smooth pretty much from the start. And these ones are actually meant to have better hole quality as well. I guess because it's not going to bounce side to side because there's actually stuff on the side there that's going to keep it centered a little bit in the hole there. So I went and had a look at just the roundness of the holes, like are they all perfectly round? And uh, yeah, they mostly were. Pretty much all of them were. I did see one or two with the standard that were kind of slightly triangular with that sort of three lobe shape. Um, and also one or two with the center plus, strangely enough. So to finish this off, I also wanted to get an idea of uh, lifetime, basically. So I just kept on drilling, you know, just drilled up all that concrete. And when I ran out of concrete, I went and got a bit of granite and went to town on that. So about 15 holes in the granite as well with each one of these bits. And to be honest, they still look like they're in pretty good nick. I was rougher than I would normally be with these, drilling downwards, so the hole stayed full of dust and also never cleaning them, never letting them get cool, just bang, 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 bang. So I did try my best to cook these bits, really wear them down, but honestly, it doesn't look like it really did all that much. I mean, they're a little bit duller. Um, the Center Plus has some of its little nubs worn down. But other than that, like they're all still in real good nick. Um, so let's just see if they lost any actual diameter. Before use, drill bit one measured 12.28 millimeters across the tip. And after use, measured 12.22. Drill bit two measured 12.38 before use. And after use, measured 
centering bit measured 12.32 before use, afterwards measured 12.28. Drill bit for the Nemesis measured 12.29 to start with, and afterwards 12.26. The Nemesis actually has these little wear indicators on the side, so still plenty of meat left on there. Good to go. So in summary, let's take a look at all the results together. Uh, in terms of price, the standard was the cheapest, followed by the Center Plus, and the V Plus, and then the Nemesis. In terms of speed, uh, the fastest drilling bit was the Center Plus. The V Plus was the second fastest. The Nemesis was the third fastest, and the standard was the fourth fastest. In terms of vibration, so user comfort, the Nemesis was the smoothest to use, the least vibration. Second least vibration was the Center Plus, and then the other two, they felt about the same, so I gave them an equal third. And in terms of wear, the Nemesis was again the best, and Center Plus was again the second best. The Standard had the third most wear, and the V Plus had the most wear. So if I just average up all these ranks from these tests, then the, uh, the, the, the best run overall was actually the Center Plus. Uh, next was the Nemesis, followed by the Standard, and uh, then the V Plus. So which one of these is the best style of drill bit for you? Um, look, I don't really like saying, you know, best and worst and stuff like that because at the end of the day, it depends on your requirements, you know? What do you need? What's good for you? I mean, my requirements are probably going to be different to yours. For example, um, if I'm using these, these bolts in a, in a rock climbing setting, I need to use this drill, okay? There's no two ways about it. Lives depend on this thing going into a nice round hole. So, for that kind of stuff, I'm reaching for a four cutter every day of the week. But, for all these speed tests I do for the YouTube videos, I usually use these ones, the standard, because they're the cheapest. You know, I've got to grab a new drill bit for every single one of these tests. Uh, and that bloody adds up, so I want the cheapest one that's, you know, not that's still going to be decent. And these are decent. Anyway guys, uh, the gang and I would like to thank you from the bottom of our uh, shanks. <laughs> for, for, for watching this far into the video. I hope it was helpful and um, yeah, don't forget to do all the YouTube shit, you know, like and subscribe and all that. And uh, just a little PSA, I'm gonna start uh, a new channel where I can stick all my rock climbing stuff. Cause you know, the power tool stuff and the rock climbing stuff, pretty different audiences. So if you are a frother for the rock climbing stuff, head over to the new channel. Uh, I'll put the deets down below. And if you're a total hammerhead and you're just interested in the rotary hammer stuff, then stick around here. So yeah, scratches later guys. Thanks for watching.